everyone and welcome to today's Industry Insider webinar with Zander. Um, my name is Marie-Claire Puffett. I am the Senior Manager for Marketing and Industry Programmes here at IB Europe. Um, and I am really uh, delighted to be hosting this webinar along, along with Zander um, on one, what is probably one of the hottest topics um, in our industry right, right now, which is retail media. So I'm going to be bringing you some exclusive new insights from a survey that we've run with Zanda on um, retail media. Um, the results of this haven't yet been released, so these are um, brand new insights, um, and they will be available um, as an industry insider with Zanda in a couple of weeks. Um, and then this is gonna be followed by a panel discussion with three experts in this field. Uh, Miriam Tome, I think I'll pronounce right, who is Senior Director for Marketplace Development at Zanda. Um, and she will be joined by Nate Pinkston, who is Head of Account Management and Customer Success at Promote IQ, which is part of Microsoft. And Alice Haw Hawcroft Anson, who is Digital Media Director at Nectar 360. So they will um, introduce themselves further as well um, at the beginning of the discussion. So before I dive into today's results, just a little bit housekeeping for you. So we will be taking questions from the audience and hopefully have time for those towards the end of the session. So do please send in your, um, your questions in the Q&A box in the Zoom. Um, and secondly, the webinar is being recorded and will be available to watch um, and share afterwards. So let's get into today's presentation. So we, as I mentioned, IAB Europe partnered with Zander on this. Um, so it's a buy side survey of advertisers and agencies on their current use um, and experience of retail media. So this includes um, drivers, barriers, um, current use, and how they plan to use retail media in the future. Um, and we surveyed just over 800 um, people. So and most of those people were brand directors, media directors or planners or programmatic media directors and over half of them have been working in the digital advertising industry for more than four years. Um, these are some of the key um, observations that, that we've drawn out of the survey. So retail media, now a key part of the media plan. Um, it's seen as a solution following the deprecation of the third party cookie and um, a key barrier is the lack of integration um, with other advertising technology. So we'll dive into that a bit more during the presentation. And as, as I said earlier, the um, more data will also be revealed in the Industry Insider, which we'll be publishing in a couple of weeks time with Sander. Um, so I'm gonna start with a bit of context on the retail media landscape first. So this is using some insights, which um, our chief economist, Daniel Knapp has collated for us. So um, it probably seems fitting to start with consumer shopping, consumer shopping habits. Um, and if we look at the UK as an example, the ONS data shows us that online sales as a percentage of total retail sales have really surged over the past couple of years. So which, and they now account for close to about 40% of total retail sales, which is, which is pretty big. Um, and obviously, it's not surprising that the COVID-19 pandemic has fundamentally changed consumer habits, particularly in shopping. And if we look at Europe, um, this, uh, this surge can be seen across Europe as well. And the percentage of online shoppers um, in Europe has now reached 75%. So again, huge number there um, up from around 65% five years ago. So looking at retail media ad spend then, um, it's not surprising that with those consumer um, shopping habits, that retail media ad spend is really key to total digital ad growth. So if you look here, this, what this chart shows us is that um, retail media ad spend growth is expected to range from anywhere from around 20 to 40% over the next few years, whereas total digital ad growth, you can see, is, is a fraction of this. So we really expect retail media to be key to digital advertising growth um, over the next few years. Um, and the actual market size, we expect to reach around 25 billion by 2026, um, which again, 
is, is pretty big if you consider that total digital ad spend right now is around 92 billion. So that's, that's obviously more than a quarter of that, um, that figure. Um, so not surprisingly then, what we found from our survey is that retail media is now a key part of the media plan. So 92% of advertisers and 74% of agencies said that they are currently partnering with retailers to reach consumers. Um, so obviously a small amount that they aren't currently partnering, but of that small amount that aren't, 88% of them and seven of advertisers and 77% of agencies said that they plan to in the next 12 months. Um, and then 67%, so around two thirds of those that are currently partnering have said that their experience of partnering with retailers for advertising has either been good or very good. So that's, that's positive. So when we look at obviously where this spend is coming from, we asked the buyers, are you reallocating spend from other channels to invest in retail media? Or are you creating new budgets? Do you have new budgets? And the majority of them said, so around 68% of advertisers and 53% of agencies have said that they are reallocating spend from other channels to invest in retail media ad spend. Um, so we also asked about which channels that spend is coming from. Um, and it's, the survey data shows us that, and like I said, this will be um, explored more in the guide as well, but um, the survey data shows us that traditional channels are most likely to take um, the hit of, of reallocation closely followed by social budgets. Um, so that's quite interesting. In terms of drivers for investing in retail media, um, as I mentioned at the start, buyers, should I change the slide? Buyers do see retail media as a solution to the deprecation of the third party cookie. So we asked how worried buyers are about the deprecation of the third party cookie and nearly three quarters of advertisers and more than half of the agencies said they are worried. Um, and 91% of advertisers, 76% of agencies see retail media as a key part of their um, advertising strategy following the deprecation of the cookie. Um, so obviously a key driver for investment in retail media. Um, and I think it's perhaps not surprising that um, the access to the retailer first party data therefore came out as, as the top um, opportunity within retail media. So 35% of buyers cited access to retailer first party data as a key opportunity and 91% um, of buyers already have a first party data strategy in place. There is some work on scale to be done. So about half of them are still working towards scale in this strategy. There's obviously some work to be done there, um, but I think it's, it's perhaps um, not surprising that the access to that first party data is a key, key driver here. Um, so in terms of barriers then on, on the flip side, um, I, mentioned, oops, I mentioned at the beginning that integration with other ad tech is a stumbling block. So around a third of the buyers we surveyed said that the fact that retail media ad networks are not integrated yet with other ad tech is a barrier to investment. Um, and around a third of them also cited the lack of technology and available data. Um, so I think, again, it comes back to that scale issue. Retail media is quite a new channel. Um, so there's obviously some work to be done in terms of the ad tech development and the scale of data. But I think what we see is a lot of opportunity, um, but also some more work to be done. So with that, I'm going to hand over to our panel. So I'm going to hand over to Miriam to introduce the panel. And I hope that has ever given everyone an idea of what the retail media landscape looks like in Europe right now um, and where the opportunities and where the challenges um, lie. So over to you, Miriam. Thank you. Thanks, Marie-Claire. Thanks for the super interesting insight you shared. Um, thanks for everyone who's joining today. I'm super excited to be hosting this panel this afternoon uh, with uh, our guests, Nate and Alice. Um, I have been working at Zander for just over three years now and I lead the marketplace team in Central Europe. And for me personally, retail media has been a very important topic, uh, especially this year. So I can see why the topic is uh, 
this is for highly in demand today and why we have a lot of people joining this uh, discussion today. So I'm very excited to have um, this discussion with Nate and Alice. And um, yeah, Nate, maybe do you want to go introduce yourself first? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Nate Pinkston. Um, I lead our account management and really our retailer partnerships for Microsoft's Promote IQ platform. Um, and so that means I'm helping all of our retail partners set up and run their retail media networks. And Alice, I'll hand things over to you. Hi, thanks, Nate. Um, I'm Alice Anson. I'm Digital Media Director at Nectar 360. So Nectar 360 is the Sainsbury's Group's B2B um, retail media realm, if you like. So we run um, Nectar, which is a great um, loyalty program, a coalition loyalty program and that really gives us all our data that then gives us the permission um, to form our retail media strategy in the digital space. I um, run the teams that operate across e-commerce, digital display and social media across both our Sainsbury's, which is our grocery brand and Argos, which is our GM brand. Well, great, thank you. And thanks again for joining today. Um, so we've heard quite a bit already about um, what Nectar does. And thanks for explaining. I think uh, since when I lived in the UK, obviously I know Nectar, but maybe not everyone else across Europe uh, has heard the name. Um, and then Nate, maybe can you share a bit more about what uh, Microsoft has been doing and especially with the Promote IQ platform, obviously what the offer is from yeah. Microsoft perspective. Yeah, so Microsoft's investing heavily in the, re the retail media space holistically. And right now what we're building is um, a holistic offering that combines the PLA and display capabilities of Promote IQ, provide on-site in-store targeting and advertising, now combining with Xander to bring in that robust off-site CTV and programmatic offerings. And together with the existing offerings of Bing, Search, programmatic business, um, you know, we can have that true holistic offering and ecosystem that uh, retailers can buy into and ha have us help support and set up for them. Um, so large retail programs like Auto, Schwartz Group in Europe, Kroger in the US, um, you know, we help set up and run these programs and, and are really the advisors to help them build that part of their business. Thank you so much. Um, and then want to kick it off with uh, something that I found really interesting out of the presentation where um, most of the advertisers have stated that um, retail media is already a big part of their media plan. I think there's some room to grow within the agency um, answers that we've seen, but in general, we've definitely seen a rapid growth of this topic and the, just the engagement from uh, various sides of the industry on, um, on retail media. And so just wondering, Nate, maybe you can start giving your perspective on what has really kicked off that growth. We've seen that COVID had an impact on um, users yeah. being online more, but has there been other reasons on why this is just picked up now? Yeah, I mean, COVID certainly certainly drove like a, what I would call a step change in shopper habits. And, and fundamentally, you know, all advertisers, I think they want to be where the shoppers are. So they'll follow that trend too. But retail media is an emerging space. And some of the great aspects that have made it a good investment, I mean, it has really strong returns. You're close to that point of conversion. So for an advertiser, you know, it's something where it's great to be in that moment of consideration and determination. Um, similarly, though, because it's still developing, it's going to get you a great return. I would say <clears throat> double-edged sword, there isn't a ton of competition yet. It hasn't become saturated and mature, so it does get you great returns. It's one of the reasons it's a great place to invest. But also, as your competition starts to grow, grow there, we see that leveling up. Uh, budgets and, and the necessity to, if you know, if your main competitors there, you want to maintain or even steal and share a voice and, and share a wallet, uh, you need to be there. And so I think we're going to see that progression to retail media as just a, a core channel that most advertisers want to invest in and see as an absolute necessity when it comes time for budgeting. Yeah. And Alice, is, is that also what you've seen, what you see is to, to drive us for this? Yeah. Uh, I Sorry. No, no, it's absolutely fine. So yeah, absolutely. I think the rise in um, online shopping during COVID really kind of pushed the agenda for retail media. Um, for me, retail media is the natural evolution of shopper marketing, which has been around for years, right? Um, and retail media is actually um, technology's answer to shopper marketing. So being able to bring that data in, um, being able to create those self-service platforms that really put the power in the hands of advertisers versus the old world of shopper marketing, where it, it 
it, it's very transactional and the results are um, kind of patchy. So, so that's for me, it's just this kind of, I guess, evolution of um, the, the growth of that channel. Yeah, to be honest, from my perspective, since I've always been in digital and um, always did programmatic specifically, to be honest, seeing um, all the different options for retailers in general, on-site, off-site, like the technology just seems to be evolving to really offer them a holistic solution to bring the data in um, as well. So even for me as an outsider coming in recently, I think uh, there has been some progression. And speaking of like, it's been picking up and obviously it's a, it's a new good thing for advertisers to find interesting data. What do you think are really the, the two benefits for a buyer, for an advertiser to be partnering with a retailer and then deliver their ads to consumers? Maybe Alice, from your perspective, what do you think are the two main points? Um, so I think that number one is that actually the control of who sees your advertising. So actually being able to target the advertising to those customers that are in market and therefore you being able to use those media pounds in the most effective way is the first one. Um, and then the second one for me is actually just the general wealth of data that you get with retail media, right? You know, it, it's huge. You can actually start to learn about the different types of customers that are purchasing your brands that you didn't even think about. And then that can influence your strategies for channels outside of the typical retail media estate um so that's probably the tea for me yeah that sounds super interesting do you have an example of where you had someone's reaching new audiences um with your data like is, is there anything you can share maybe sorry that's like an <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> um, so we, we do a lot of work um, actually with um, with our brands on this. Um, so looking at basket modeled audiences is a really key thing for us, actually. So um, understanding who similar types of shoppers are uh, or customers could be based on what else they are purchasing within our store estate um, and then being able to reach those audiences and either convert them um, to the brand or even convert them into the category, which is, is huge for us. And we see kind give any figures unfortunately <laughs> uh, but we see a great ret return on those and um the other thing as well is is we do a lot of work on creative optimization um and what we generally find within the retail media space is actually the creative that converts better um is different to that that converts within kind of your traditional re um, space and that's always a bit of an eye-opener for our brands when they think something is going to do really well because it's done well well elsewhere and then when you bring in that um that consumer lens um through the the customer data we have then it kind of blows their minds quite a lot of the time so that's always really fun as well oh i i, I could talk about that one specifically <laughs> like for, forever but maybe we give uh, nate a chance as well to um name his two benefits that he would um, highlight for you working with retailers yeah i mean i think alice sort of <laughs> hit the key one so i'm not going to be super insightful here but it truly is about the data and understanding the customer. I think retailers' wealth of data and their relationship with their customers is something that it's really hard to find elsewhere. So if you think of the broader programmatic space, you know, oftentimes you're not seeing that conversion. You're not getting those, uh, you know, shopping habits. Alice just referenced Basket Builder. That's I assume built on some sort of sciences from previously bought product. We see things like that work really well because you've got this wealth of data from a loyal shopper. Um, the ability to identify shoppers who, you know, the, the big, big thing since GDPR really has been, how can you help identify who your shoppers are to help improve that targeting, get better data, understanding and insights that lead you to ultimately better results. I think that's something that retailers can do really well because they have a long-term relationship. Retail stores, retail chains, tend to be places that can build that loyalty in ways that I think a lot of D2C brands haven't found an effective tactic for. And so they're gonna have that really strong wealth of data that can bring shoppers back over and over. That science is an understanding is, is really, I think the, the core benefit of, uh, of retail media. Now that leads to higher return on ad spend, you know, better ways to improve and defend market share. Certainly there's plenty of benefits around that, but I think the insights in that data is ultimately where it's going to come back to every time. Yeah, I think you're making a good point as well with the GDPR. Like, how can you identify your users in a really, um, in a way that the user is really aware that their data is is being used as well, and that they've proactively signed up. And I think um, 
like another topic that we already wanted to discuss anyways in that space is the, the death of the third party cookie that everybody's been predicting for a while now but it seems to be actually happening so i think um with with those movements and like data privacy becoming a lot more um front of mind for people and then also like the tracking just changing with all of that it seems like retail media is, is a good solution for that and on the other hand you have to talk to different retailers right to have that scale is is that the case like do you think it's scalable the way um we're working with it now and they you're ready on mute so please go sure i mean i think retail media is evolved and so what retail media looks like today is probably not what it's going to look like in five years and like any advertising channel it's going to evolve fundamentally it's going to have to be scalable and how it changes and evolves i think is is going to be something that we probably aren't going to guess correctly today but as we talk about the third party cookie you know retailers i'll go back to what i just said they're really good at building that relationship and so they can do things like loyalty programs phenomenal one i certainly opt in when i'm at the grocery store to get those extra rewards every time it's a great way to identify me as a shopper. And so fundamentally, that's something that provides enough value to the consumer that they're not, you know, sharing my data with that retailer is perfectly acceptable. And then the advertisers get to know who I am and what my shopping habit, or at least some amount of, of data around my shopping habits. So if we look to, to increase the size and maturity of retail media, it's gonna have to become more scalable. I think you're gonna see an evolution where more tools and, and other players even come in that, that help provide some of that scale. Um, I'm sure we have lots of our friends from the agency space and you know they're always really great at innovating kind of what are new tools and effective ways to provide some of that scale. So maybe it's not totally scalable, to, it's not totally scalable today, but I think it's going to evolve and it's gonna have to become scalable. It just like any advertising channel, it's gonna have to evolve that way. Yeah. And I think from just to add my point of view on this, so I think um, I completely agree, like it is a, an operation that is going to have to become scaled, you know, everything is very uh, segmented at the moment. And I don't think that's for the best, to be honest. I know that um, IAB in, in the UK, there's a round table next week around retail media to say, actually, do we start in, implementing some standardization? So actually, if you're looking across retailers, at least you're looking at the same figures, um, as opposed to where we are now that, you know, attribution models are different all over the place and I think for me that's the journey that it will go on is, is first of all will be that discussion around the standardization um, of reporting and then thinking about actually what does that look like through as, as Nate said you know how do the agencies address this but also you know there's some great aggregated platforms out there already um, within this space and how do they kind of continue to push forward um, and offer the brand's innovation um, and from a retailer's perspective from my, well, from my point of view as well, um, actually the more scaled we can become in this, the best way to be. And the way that we look at it is actually the people that are the simplest to operate and work with are the ones that are gonna win out of this. Yeah. And I mean, we've seen um, some big companies out there using their data and being really globally active and that's been working. It's not necessarily that they are the original retailer, I would say. Um, so I, I don't know if you've come across this, but really the, the feeling that I have is that people are pushing for more local solutions as well, localized independent solutions as well, where the user has been just more engaged with rather than on this global big scale that we've seen with big companies. And then, yeah, I sorry, yeah, Nick, go ahead. I would, I would I would say yes, there, there's a, a lot of that. Again, I think it's going to come back to advertisers are going to go where the shoppers are, where the consumers are. And so if you've got someone locally who has strong relationships, strong loyalty, that's that's where the shoppers are going to be. And that's fundamentally, you know, who we want to reach uh, because an advertiser, advertising dollars are only as good as the conversions they drive. That should be the key takeaway from the panel, but we're only halfway through. Um, so one thing that has also came up in switching gears here slightly on the discussions and the presentation from Marie Claire was that there is a an issue is the lack of technical integrations and me coming from a tech company working on integrations being integrated with the promoter IQ um, I I saw that and I was a bit concerned about that what does it actually mean and so I think it would be nice to to get your description Nate on like what are people referring to in that when they answer that question yeah i mean well i think alice even touched on it the silo um you know today most retail media 
programs essentially offer or operate as private marketplaces. And so if you're an advertiser, you know, you need to go to different portals, different logins, what have you, to really figure out how to manage and, and send your advertising dollars into those uh, walled gardens, private marketplaces. And as we talk more about that evolution and that scale, I think what you're going to see is more and more ways. Again, I, I keep trying to, Alice, you're a great part, partner to have on this panel, but the ease of use is going to be a way that gets advertising dollars to flow in that direction. And so we see partners, I mean, Sky, formerly Kenshu, is a, is a great partner of Microsoft's that we've recently integrated with and other players like PacView, Flywheels and Agency has a great tool. And so you're going to see more and more tool providers, I think, come in to help kind of manage some of that spend and make it easier. You also talk about data, which is really something that you know, helps drive informed decisions. And to Alice's point about standardization, I mean, if you have one platform that's doing that investment across these different private marketplaces, you can get apples to apples metrics and help you make the informed decision about what kind of returns you're seeing, what are those tactics or optimizations that are gonna be driving the most effective return on your ad spend. So I think you're gonna see more and more things like that come into the market where there's gonna be ways to standardize, I think, first campaign trafficking, reporting and data analytics. Um, fundamentally, there's gonna be more and more players that offer real value around kind of stitching together either these private marketplaces or the ability to kind of network those in together. I mean, certainly from Microsoft's perspective, we see that as part of the, the move to scale, which is why we're investing in that and bringing partners like Sky and PacView into our ecosystem. Yeah, um, thanks, thanks for explaining that um, as well. And then Alice, obviously, the same question to you. Like, are there a lot of tech integrations that you're currently working on? Like, what's, what's your perspective on this? Are you working more, more, with more of these providers that Nate has also uh, referenced just now? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we've we've been on a journey. So we have two different platforms that we use, you know, in one retailer, two platforms already chaotic, right? If you're the advertiser. Um, so one of the platforms we work on is, is in a partnership um, with Citrus Ad, and we've been working with those guys with um, Sky, Kenshu, who were formerly Kenshu, and PacView to open up our, our space um, there. And then when we look at our um, in-house built tech, which is our own in-house DSP, we've been on a journey at the moment, what we're opening up is our reporting APIs. So actually you can start looking at the reporting in this same place. And then what we'll be looking at further down the line is, is kind of just full open APIs so that actually we can start integrating into these platforms as well. Because, um, yeah, as I said earlier, like for me, actually, you need to be in the place where the buyers are ultimately, right? Um, and if you create any barriers to that, that is where it, it's going to fail, um, no matter how good your data is or how good you are as a retailer. Um, you know, we all go through it every day. As soon as you have to log into a separate system, you're like, oh, I'll wait, I'll wait and do that later. So yeah, for us, it's it's quite an active journey that we've been on over the last kind of six to nine months. Yeah. Do you see the retail media space being like, like there's a lot of those uh, providers that you still need to integrate with? Do you think there's a select few that everybody should be working with? Or is it just a really an ongoing process of integrating more and more partners? Like what's the vibe there? It's really hard to say, right? Because um, you know, a, a lot of these these kind of aggregator platforms will have existing relationships with brands, and brands will have preferences and, and who they deal with, um, you know, over other other people. And then you add in the agency relationships um, and the other layers of budget there, and the relationships they have. So for us, it's about working with everyone that we can possible, um, and then obviously, you know keeping an eye on that and what that means. Um, I'm sure as kind of Nate mentioned, at some point in the future, there will be this consolidation. I think there will be kind of one or two big players out there um, in this space. Um, so it's just making sure that we're with them um, on the day that comes. Yeah, and um, thanks for sharing that. And I just saw we had um, a question come in uh, from the audience and I'm gonna throw it at uh, you, Nate, because it's uh, about the uh, Microsoft perspective, I guess, on having Promote sure. IQ and then using Xander as well um, for audience extension cases depends, obviously. Um, and the question is, do you have uh, one unified platform for both use cases? I could answer the question now, but I'll, I'll let you. The answer is yes. Yes, we do. And so absolutely. I mean, the vision is certainly um, at some point in the near future where you can buy anything across Microsoft's entire ecosystem, which would include being search and their programmatic offerings. 
But Xander and Promote IQ are, are some of the first integrations we've done. And so you can currently buy offsite advertising through Promote IQ's platform, which directly taps into Xander's ecosystem. And we are, we are integrated. Um, you'll probably be hearing a lot more about that in the new year as well. But it's certainly part of our investment in retail media to say that bringing all of that full funnel engagement together is core to how you reduce that friction that Alice was talking about with your advertisers. And so we do want to provide one place where you can do all of that buying and, you know, really get to those analytics that also dedupe the attribution across on-site and off-site that provides you with that holistic view around data and reporting to get you those insights and analytics and really, you know, allow you to, to holistically spend your advertising dollars in the best, most effective ways. And um, on top of that topic, we had another question come in that in general asks about um, key challenges, the top challenges that have been identified for retailers in working with, with ad tech um, partners. I assume, Nate, that would be a good question for you, but Alice, please free, sure. free to chime in here as well. I mean, I think one of the things that even touches on your two questions ago around, you know, what are those players in the space? we're still uncovering what are the problems and pain points as points of friction. And so I think that's one of the places that retailers may not always want to invest in building technology themselves. And so looking for partners, <clears throat> excuse me, and players that have integrations that can be effective, a couple that come to mind, I mean, creative management and creative creation can be one. You think about the massive scale that you want to get with display businesses, just you know, doing that in-house or even just having the approval management process for all the advertiser created creatives, that can be a real pain point. Um, I think data and analytics and reporting is something that you know, some platforms offer really robust reporting, some less so. And so I think you're gonna look and, and see where to Alice's point around some apples to apples comparisons that you really wanna be able to say, you know, what does return on ad spend mean? How is the attribution done? Is that the same uh, across platforms? Uh, short answer is, I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, trafficking tools, we've talked about folks like Sky and PacView. And, and I think the other pain point that I've seen as well is kind of like IO and billing management is something that retailers aren't really set up as media businesses. And so, you know, they're looking for solutions that are going to help them um, really operate that sort of, uh, the, the finance side of, of being an advertising business, which is one that I certainly think can be a friction point as well. Yeah, from a retailer point of view as well. Um, so if we think of the way that our business operates, um, our kind of tech and development function is kind of a shared service across um, both our side of the business. So retail media, as well as the uh, kind of just keeping the website and the, the stores running. So prioritization of this and what is kind of a crowded space. And, you know, we touched on before the growth of online shopping. There's so much now we need to do just as a retailer to keep ahead, let alone in this retail media space. Um, and then I think the second thing as well is, is talent. Um, actually, when we start to think about talent within this space, um, be that development talent, be that kind of sales talent, contracting, whatever it is, it's a really hard for for area. Like, you know, if we think a couple of months ago, you type retail media into, I don't know, um, LinkedIn and look for jobs. There was nothing out there. And I think I checked earlier today and there's, you know, there's hundreds of jobs now out there that are titled retail media, um, you know, and the talent that operates in this space, you know, it's hugely fought for. So you've got to think about, you know, how do you remunerate people properly? How do you keep them in the business? How do you stop them from being coached? Um, so there's lots of challenges, particularly for us as, as a retailer, where we can't compete with the likes, you know, of, of Google, of Microsoft, for example, because um, much more sexy brands than uh, Sainsbury's. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. I used to love Sainsbury's. I always went there when I lived there. So... Pretty, pretty sexy to me. But um, if you say, um, okay, we have the tech integrations and that needs to be done, that needs to be sorted out. Um, you refer to finding the right people, obviously keeping your talent. Uh, if you had to pick your two, top two challenges right now um, with retail media, what would you say they were? Um, I think probably the, the top challenge we're facing at the moment is probably just the pace of the change um, that we, we're going through. So actually it feels a bit like you're in a hamster wheel most of the time um, and you're trying to keep up. Um, and, and that really is a big challenge. And if, if we're struggling as a retailer to keep up, we can only imagine what our advertisers are going through and what our agencies are going through. Um, so that, that for me really is the main challenge at the moment. It is the pace of change within this space and just keeping on top of it. 
um, keeping ourselves educated so that then we can work with everyone else and, and you know, support them on their journey too. Yeah. Obviously, as, as I said before, I've only just started learning about retail media. So I, I, I feel you even from like for me, it's even harder to really keep up with all the changes and all the new things that are out there. Um, Nate, what would you say are your top two challenges? Well, I think not totally dissimilar, but, you know, Miriam, kind of alluding to what you just said, there's a lot of tried and true advertising tactics. And I think of things like the audience that have been built, uh, the, the targeting that folks are used to. And translating that into a retail media context is often not sort of a, a one for one or you don't, you're not going to get the same results. And Alice talked about creatives, but I think that's true also when you think about the audiences you have. And in a lot of cases, retailers are not also themselves as adept at thinking about what audiences should they be packaging up for advertisers to help target. And, and you know, they've been advertisers themselves, right, to bring in traffic, customer acquisition for a long time. Those are not the same audience segments that um, typically advertisers, they're not going to want like a, a lapsed Sainsbury shopper, they're going to want a lapsed brand shopper of their products. And, and so I think evolving and changing what you're doing with that data and how you're packaging it up, how you're thinking about the targeting and tactics that are going to be meaningful for retail media and adjusting those to that, that consumer moment of that part of the journey, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges now. You know, we can all certainly talk about macro and economic type things that there are going to be some headwinds there, but retail media, I think, is a data story. And so most of the answers probably come back to the ways first party data is being used and packaged and then how you're making that available. And then what is the kind of reporting and uh, analytics that you're getting on the back end? Yeah, obviously data is the hot topic. Um, we had a question come in referring to that as well. And I want to uh, use that time now to answer it. And it's about um, non-captive brands. Uh, do you guys think that retailers are ready to share their data with non-captive brands and Nate because you were referring already to to the storytelling um, aspect of it all maybe you want to start with this one I think the strategy is going to be an individual decision for some of the retailers some are going to feel more comfortable and some are going to develop strategies that make that an effective way to go um, you know we look at there are some emerging tactics around things like curation that you know you can basically there's moments in time lifestyle life cycle type events that are great for targeting um, so, you know, a curation, I'm alluding to Xander's curate product, um, for instance, but I think there's a lot that, you know, retailers are going to have to see there's, there is going to eventually be a maturity in the retail media business. And so they're going to have to look at new strategies to help activate that data. We think about the deprecation of third party cookies and how targeting needs to evolve. Again, the retailer's data is, is so key because they've got the relationship. They've got that loyalty built. There's so much that they know. And so, you know, engaging and finding ways to allow brands to target that outside of the, their own ecosystem, I think that's an effective tactic. And I think that's going to be something that retailers need to grapple with. Um, there may be privacy concerns. There's ways you want to think about doing that that, you know, does protect your overall strategy to retain those consumers. Um, but... I think it's going to be an area where people are investing. I know it's an area people are investing. I think it's going to be an area you see more and more of in the future. Yeah, for us, it, it comes back to the customer. So non-endemic advertising is something that we, we're continually talking about and grappling with um, as a business. And what we need to be comfortable with is, you know, we are the guardians of our customers' data and, and we need them, right? We need them in order for retail media to work. Um, and anything that might, you know, turn them off, get them to opt out um, is a real concern for us. So it, it's finding that sweet spot of actually where are we adding the value to the customer and what do they get back from that relationship from us, you know, um, using their data, as well as all the other things like, you know, updating your privacy policy, making sure that all of that, this stuff is included. Um, and right now we kind of haven't um, made a decision kind of one way or the other because um, we're still looking for actually what is that customer value um, and where does that come from? And um, if you would talk to an advertiser now who's like currently looking into the retail media space and, and want to start working with retailers, what would your advice be? Like some practical tips on what to think about? Obviously, the storytelling maybe is a, is a big aspect of it, but what, what would you say to them before they start? Oh, 
uh, what would I say to them? I obviously work with us, but no, other than that, <laughs> I'd say to them that they need to be really clear on what it is they want to achieve. Like retail media is, is such a big sweeping term for so many things, right? Um, you know, there are parts of retail media that are really top of funnel, there are parts that are really at the bottom of the funnel, and they have to be clear on what their strategy is and where this plays into it. How does it complement all the other marketing that, that that is going on how does it support it and, and and boost it um the other thing that i would say and it is probably my motto for most things is test things right you know have that conversation with your business that this is a growing space and therefore we do have to test a few things and guess what not everything will work um but i think going into those conversations and i would say really challenging your retailer your agency whoever it is that is buying your retail media to say look this is my strategy these are the outcomes that i need to achieve go away and try some stuff. Tell me what works because it probably will be different to your strategy today. Yeah. Nate, what would your, what would your advice be to the advertisers? Um, I mean, it's going to, I think, be an important part of where you're spending your advertising dollars. Um, to Alex's point, start by testing, you know, activate some budgets that are focused on a specific goal, but then look to optimize, evolve that and grow. Um, and ultimately, I think, be aware of who else is playing, monitor, you know, what are your big channels? Because I do think you're going to see increased competition in the retail media space. And there's not a ton of saturation yet, but it's going to come. And you're probably not needing to defend share today. It's a great place to grab and take share at this moment. But over time, that's going to be a place where you need to defend against it because you're, you know, your competitors probably on this call too and listening in. They should go out there and steal some share. And um, we had another question come in, and I do wanna do wanna ask it before we talk about the broader picture. Where do we see retail media go in the future? Um, I feel like I know Alice's answer to it, but let's see. Let, maybe you can start first. Uh, do you envisage a world where brands buy sponsor product ads regardless of where the ad is placed, so regardless of the retailer, and um, or do you think that the choice of retailer is important? Um, I do see a world actually where you put the money into, I don't know, sponsored Diet Coke and actually it runs wherever it runs um, that's relevant for the customer and it returns the best spend for you. Um, yeah, I, I, I do see a world where that is possible and I, I think that actually if it's the best thing for the customer for it to be brand agnostic, then, then that's the way that we should go. Yeah. I don't know, Nate, if you have an opinion on that one. I mean, that's something that we we are doing, uh, you know, as we think about how we can activate across a broader network of retailers and tap into, you know, a lot of partnerships like our Xander integrations and, and colleagues. Ultimately, we want to do what's right for the advertisers too. I mean, there are clients just as much as the retailers are. And so we're looking to provide added value to both. And fundamentally, reaching that consumer wherever they are is is the most important thing. And so... It's, you know, the way that programmatic sort of came about to help target across the broad base of the internet instead of just the publisher itself. I think you're going to see versions of that and it, you know, there'll be, there'll be a mix. There'll be multiple strategies you have to employ, but I absolutely see it uh, as part of the future. And I mean, I think that's why Microsoft's bringing it to market as well. Great. So I think... Um... We're at the point, we already used the term future. Let's see, what do we think? Uh, where's the retail media landscape developing to in the next 12 months? Um, who wants to go first? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So um, the next 12 months in retail media, um, I think it, as we all said, it's going to be, it's going to grow massively, right? But I think also the term retail media will start to expand. Um, so retail media in its most traditional sense at the moment um, is kind of e-commerce and kind of offsite advertising. I think it will move into in-store. Um, I think it will, will move into, you know, digital out of home. I think it will start to encompass those more traditional channels like email, um, where actually you can start linking things back to, to the sale. Um, and I think it's only going to become a bigger part of the pie. You know, research suggests that actually TV money com is coming directly out of TV into retail media. And I think that is only going to accelerate. So for me, actually, retail media is going to become all encompassing, I think, with it within this space. Nate, what's yeah. your prediction? 
Uh, well, I feel like Alice teed me up very nicely. I mean, we we are expanding what we call retail media for Microsoft that has an on-site component. Xander's part of our off-site component. We're doing in-store work already with the in-store modes and apps, and we're expanding that to audio and d display in-store. Um, so the direction it's going is going to be fully encompassing of all of these places. And so I think it is going to expand and grow. I think it's going to mature. I think uh, how we think about, you know, using retail media is going to be uh, forced to mature in ways. There's probably, it's probably going to be a harder, tighter advertising market over the next 12 months. People are going to be more judicious with how they're spending their advertising dollars. And that scarcity um, is going to force optimization, innovation. It's going to force change that will help the industry move forward. And so I think just that that need uh, is going to drive some innovation and change in the space. I think you're going to see it expand. I think you're going to see it also vertically integrate so you can get reporting across all of those channels. Um, but fundamentally, I do see people investing more, just look at the survey results. So as it becomes more mature and more saturated, I think it's gonna become a more necessary, a more absolute uh, line item within everyone's budget and planning as they move forward. Amazing, thank you so much both for sharing all the insights. I'm uh, really happy that I got put on this train of retail media uh, a few months ago, maybe a year ago now. Um, it's super exciting and it's always great to talk to people who've been in this space for a while and you know, working on, on this exciting new, um, new old uh, thing and getting the data to the consumer, uh, to the users and uh, reaching the real the consumer in the real spaces where we want to use them, uh, reach them. That's how I wanted to say it. And with that, I think we're done. And I want to hand back over to Marie-Claire for the final Thank word. You. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Alice and Nate. That was a really, really insightful, insightful conversation. We have time for quite a few audience questions there as well. So thank you to everyone who, um, who took the time to send your questions in. So just before we close, I just wanted to mention one more thing. So IB Europe has recently announced the launch of a new working group on retail media. Um, so I will pop the link in the, in the chat and, and send it around to everyone afterwards as well. Um, so if you are interested in this space and you are an IAB Europe member, then feel free to reach out and, um, and get involved. Um, that would be great. We'll be kicking that off in a couple of weeks. Um, but other than that, thank you so much to everyone for joining today's session. Thank you again to Miriam, Nate and Alice for taking the time to um, share their expert um, insights. And um, as I mentioned, this session has been recorded and will be shared with everyone who signed up afterwards and it will be in our newsletter tomorrow also. So thank you very much everyone and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.